Hello and welcome in this session on learner-centered approaches. As we know that in learner-centered approaches, learners are at the center of all planning, execution, assessment, everything. Teachers work as a facilitator. They facilitate learning. They provide the opportunity to the learners so that learners can construct their own meaning. There are many learner-centric approaches and one such approach is problem-solving approach. So what is problem-solving? In problem-solving, basically the learners can take on some of the responsibility of their own learning. In all learner-centric approaches, basically, learners take responsibility of their own learning. Learners take personal action to solve problems. They resolve conflicts. They discuss alternatives and they focus on thinking as a vital element of the curriculum. So in problem solving as a learner centric approach, thinking plays a very important role. Problem solving engages learners in investigations where they can raise questions. They can plan how they will proceed. They can design the procedures of learning, they can collect the information from various sources and they can draw out conclusions and form conclusions. So problem solving approach keeps learners very active, very engaged and in every process whether it is questioning, investigation, planning, deciding about the procedure, collecting the information or drawing out some conclusion, always learner is at the center of approach. Actually, Gagne, when he talked about problem solving approach, he said that end result of the problem solving is when the learner actually discovers a higher order rule of generalization and constructs new relationship and meaning for a concept under investigation. So problem solving means that whatever problem or the concept has been presented to the learner, learner should try to find out an actual solution for that problem to construct or identify a new relationship or develop a new meaning of the concept by applying various higher order thinking skills. Then basically he or she is using problem solving approach. A risk also defined problem solving approach when he said that it is a planned attack upon a difficulty or perplexity for the purpose for finding a satisfactory solution. Problem solving involves reflective thinking and not merely the accumulation of the facts or the blind acceptance of the ideas which someone in authority has given. So if someone has presented some ideas, maybe a senior teacher, maybe a known educationist, maybe a very famous practitioner, maybe a politician, a religious uh, leader. Problem solving basically promotes in the learners a habit of questioning so that they not only collect the facts, but they analyze the facts and they should not blindly accept whatever is being presented to them. They should be ready to question. They should be ready to comment and they should be able to analyze with logic and rational. Coulson and Stone basically define problem solving as a scientific sense means that some perplexity in the environment or some unexpected or different occurrence which must be explained. So means the learners who use problem solving approach according to Coulson and Stones, they look about the differences or the unexpected part in the environment which is happening and then they try to find out then how it is happening. What are the characteristics of problem solving? Problem solving begins with the assumption that learning is an active, integrated 
and constructive process influenced by social and contextual factors. Problem solving characterized by a learner centered approach with teachers as facilitator rather than disseminator. Whenever we are talking about any learner centric approach, whether it is inquiry approach or problem solving approach, teacher is always facilitator, not the disseminator of knowledge. Problem solving is always based on purposeful activity. It is based on scientific skills and the abilities like reflective thinking and reasoning. How one can do problem solving instructions in the classroom? In a problem solving instruction, you should remember that decision making is based on the data rather than hunches. So the data, the facts, the observation, the analysis prevails, not your personal hunches. In problem solving instruction, a learner try to find out the root cause of the problem. He or she not only look on the superficial symptoms. So only symptomatic treatment is not giving in problem solving approach. So if someone is trying to use problem solving instruction in the classroom, he or she will look towards the root cause of the problem and they will not react quickly on the superficial symptoms. They devise some permanent solution rather than relying on quick fix. So the short solution, immediate solution, temporary solutions are not the outcome of problem solving instructions. In problem solving approach, in problem solving instructions, learners try to find out, to devise the permanent solution of the problem which have been shared with them. So what are the steps of problem solving method? There are basically six steps. The first is recognize and define the problem. Then comes analyze the problem to determine its root cause. Then comes generate alternative solutions. Then comes select a solution which is most appropriate. Then implement the solution to solve the problem. And then evaluate that whether the solution which have been implemented is solving the problem or not means evaluate the outcome of implementation of the solution. Let us discuss about these steps in details. The first step is recognize and define the learning problem. You know, learner diagnoses the situation, they identifies and discusses the symptoms and scope of the problem. So who present the problem? This is the question. In problem solving approach, many times teacher doesn't provide any problem. They just expose the learners to a problematic situation where learners identify the problem and when they analyze the situation, they diagnose the situation, they identify that what problem is, how much it is expended, what are its dimensions and sub dimensions and for this learners use variety of tools like brainstorming, interviewing, uh, sometimes they complete the questionnaire to gather the information. They discuss with the peers, they discuss with the affected people of that problem, they discuss with the people who are in the ambit of that problem, who are directly or indirectly associated with that problem. So they just try to collect the information from them. They raise, they review, they discard many statements of the problem and they try to make a tentative definition of the problem in specific words. After analyzing the problem, they try to define the problem and when they define the problem, they keep few things in their mind like the problem state should be very concise, definite and in clear language. So whatever problem you are, problem statement you are developing, it should be worded in a concise, definite and clear language. Your problem should contain some keywords which may help you in not only you but all the learners or all others for better understanding of the problem. It should be in form of question or statement. When they are analyzing the problem and they are trying to determine its root cause, what they need to do? They need to do a root cause analysis called RCA, which is a very popular and very often used techniques, which basically helps to answer the question 
that why the problem occurred in the first place. Root cause analysis seeks to identify the origin of a problem using a specific set of steps with associated tools and to find out the primary cause of the problem so that they can determine what happened, they can determine why it happened and they can figure out that what to do to reduce the likelihood that it will happen again. When they analyze the problem and they determine the root cause, they basically do the root cause analysis as I told you and RCA assumes that systems and events are interrelated. An action in one area triggers an action in other, another area and so on. So by tracing back these actions, you can discover where the problem started and how it grows into the symptoms which you are now facing. It is also a stage wherein you can redefine the problem based on the causes and analysis. Then comes the step of generating alternative solutions. So when you generate alternative solutions, you do not find the single solution. You try to find out what are the possible solutions, what are the viable solutions before reaching to the conclusion. So learner basically explore the whole full range of viable solutions. And when they generate variety of solutions, they generate as many as possible potential solutions. Then they relate each solution to the cause of the problem. And sometimes if they find that, okay, two solutions are working in same direction or they are nearby similar, so they merge the solutions or they relate them. It is basically the stage where learner must reduce redundancy and eliminate any possibility that do not address the cause of identified problem. Then they find out one solution because they evaluate each and every possible and potential solution identified in the previous step for its strength and weaknesses. They try to select a solution which entails searching for most effective solution by applied two general criteria, which means that an effective solution is technically feasible and it is acceptable to those who will have to implement it. So if it is feasible, possible and it is implementable, only then the solution is accepted. So whenever they select such solution by applying these criteria, they apply the solution. So feasibility can be determined by asking many questions like, can it be implemented within a reasonable time? Can it be done within the cost limit? Will it work reliably? Will it use staff and equipment which is available efficiently? Is it flexible enough to adopt the changing conditions? You can ask these questions while evaluating a solution's acceptability. Then comes the problem solving overview. Uh, do the implementers support the solution? Perceiving it as a birth for their timing or energy? Are the risks manageable which are involved in this uh, solution? Will the solution benefit the persons which are being affected by the problem? Will it benefit to the organization? So selecting a solution requires you to choose one that will be effective, one that has sufficient technical quality to resolve the problem and is acceptable to those who will implement it. And then comes the implementation of the solution. So choosing a solution doesn't mean that you have solved the problem. Because you have just identified a solution which is a tentative solution. You put the solution into actions, you apply that solution which may prove sometimes difficult. So when you implement the solution, you need an action plan that what you need to do, who will do it, when will the key milestones will be completed, how will the necessary actions will be carried out, why do these actions lead to a solution. Then you evaluate the outcome. Evaluation is the monitoring of problem till the final solution. Sometimes you use additional feedback mechanism to detect the need for mid-course co corrections and to ensure that the problem is solved without creating new problem. You collect the data, you report what has been accomplished and finally it includes reflecting on its processes and results. So what are the advantages of problem solving method? It basically ensures the active participation of the learners in teaching learning activity. It habituates learner 
to study regularly and be organized. It helps learners gain scientific views and thinking. It makes learners interested in learning. It helps learners improve their sense of responsibility. It provides learners opportunity to face the problem boldly and to deal with it through a scientific approach. It helps learners benefit from others' ideas and help each other. It predicates the learning to a more logical and doughty foundation. It improves the ability of the learners to identify problem and put forward hypothesis. It helps learners to adopt the idea of calmness in making a decision. But there are certain disadvantages also. Like all other learner-centered approaches, it takes too much time. It is not possible to apply this method to all the disciplines and all the concepts. It can load some worldly burden to the learners. It can be difficult for the learners to provide the material and source which is required for solving the problems. Evaluating the learner through this method can be difficult. So with this I must say that problem solving approach basically develops higher order skills among the learners because they learn how to analyze the problem. They learn how to find the root cause of the problem. They learn how to find out the tentative solutions of the problem. They learn how to evaluate which solution can be more effective. What are the advantages and disadvantages of that solution? They learn how to implement and analyze the implementation of the solution and provide the conclusion that whether solution is solving the problem permanently or not. So I hope that this small discussion will help you in applying problem solving approach in your classroom, whether you are a science teacher, you are a social science teacher, you are a mathematics teacher or you are a language teacher, you will apply it in different situations with different contents and you make your learners good learners, effective learners and you develop their higher order thinking skills. Thank you very much.